Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, if you're new to DBT, I'm going to show you how you configure it from scratch by creating an account with DBT, as well as linking it to the Git repository and create an account in that if you haven't got one already, as well as preparing some data files by loading them onto Snowflake as well. So this is part one. I'm basing these videos on really comprehensive and free training DBT provides, and I'll provide the link to that beneath this video in the description if you're interested. But I'm just going to do a short series of videos around how to get started with DBT on Snowflake and help you along on that journey. The first thing that we're going to do is load the training data into the data warehouse, in our case Snowflake. Now the DBT Fundamentals training session gives you these links which have CSV stored in a public S3 bucket that you can use. So let's just flick to our Snowflake environment. Now this SQL script is provided on the same lesson from DBT. So we're going to create a warehouse called Transformin. And then we're going to create two databases, one called Raw, one called Analytics, and we'll explain what they are a little later, and a schema in the Raw database called Jaffle Shop. So next we're going to create a table called Customers. And you can see this copy into command. And if you want to know more about loading data in Snowflake, then I'll provide a pop-up link to a video around data movement in Snowflake where I go through go through the copy into command in a little bit more detail. But here we're going to load the uh, CSV file from the S3 location. And you can see we've loaded 100 records successfully. We're going to create another table called orders. And again, another copy into command to load the shop orders data into that table. And we've got 99 records. Then this is our payment information from Stripe. So we're going to create a schema called Stripe in the raw database and a table called payment. And then we're going to upload our CSV file, our final file from the S3 public bucket location. And there's our 120 records. If I refresh our object explorer on the left hand side, you can see now we've got our analytics and raw database, and we've got our Jaffle Sharp and Stripe schemas with our tables in there as well. So that's the first step where we load our data into the warehouse itself. Okay, so now we've loaded our data into our warehouse. The next thing we need to do is set up our integration with Git. So dbt integrates with Git for version control. And to do that, we need to go to cloud.getdbt.com. And we're going to click create a free company account. We'll fill out these details and click create my account. Once you've completed that page, you'll then be presented with this screen where you need to click the button to get a verification email sent to your email address. Okay, so now you're presented with the default analytics project in dbt and up here you can see that the company name is set to whatever company name that you entered on the previous page we'll continue this later in terms of setting up the project in dbt for, but for now we need to go to github i'm entered my email i've created a password and enter the username i click continue you'll then get a code to enter send to your email address and then you're pretty much nearly there. And there we go. We've now got our account set up and we can create our repository as well. So we have to give the repository a name, leave it as public, Leave all the settings unchecked for initialize the repository and click create repository. So now we've got our GitHub repository set up. The next step is to connect this to our DBT cloud account. And so next we'll click continue. I will select Snowflake for our database connection. We need to get our account name, so let's head over to our Snowflake window. And this section here is our account. We'll paste that in there. Our 
databases analytics the warehouse is transformed the development credentials are the ones that used to log into snowflake itself in the schema you can see that dbt's populated uh, the schema for us this is where all the models will be deployed into dbt underscore uh, first name initial and surname you can change this and override it if you need to for now i'm going to leave this as the default so i've entered my account name here for my snowflake account and note i have my specific unique account id a dot and then the region that my account sits within so if you look at my url here it's that portion only so you don't use the https you don't use the anything from the snowflakecomputing.com bit onwards that catches a lot of people out and they can spend a lot of time on that unnecessarily my database is the one that we created before with the script provided by dbt called analytics and we also created a warehouse if you remember using the same script called transformed we add those in there here's my username and password i'm using to connect to my snowflake account not to connect to dbt but my snowflake account and by default, dbt chooses this schema name. But all the models I build will end up with this schema name applied to them. And this is dbt underscore first name, initial surname. I can then click um, test. And if successful, you should see this screen come up too. Okay, so now we need to set up our repository. So to do that, we're gonna click GitHub. And the very first time you do that, you need to authorize dbt cloud to access the application. And it says no repos found. So what we've got to do, we've got to go into our profile and we've got to click configure integration in GitHub. And on the screen, it asks what repositories that you want dbt cloud to access. I'm going to select a particular repository, the one that we just created before and click install. And there you can see now it has access to my repo from dbt cloud. I'm going to go back into GitHub. Next, I'm going to click on the three lines at the top left. And I'm going to click home. And I'm going to click continue setup now. And this takes me back to the page where we continue setup our repository. We click continue. We click GitHub. You can now see that the repository that we've linked now appears here. I've now clicked on my repository at the bottom and after a short period of time, it will go green saying that dbt cloud is now connected to my git repo. I can click continue. Now we can invite users if we want to. I don't for this demo, so I'm just gonna skip those invitations and complete. Now we're ready to start developing. So we can click the button, start developing. Okay, and now it's initialized the project. We're ready to go. If I click initialize project, you can see it creates these folders on the left hand side and a couple of configuration files. The YAML dbt underscore project YAML file is really important. And um, we'll touch on that a little bit later in one of the subsequent videos as I talk you through how to use dbt on top of Snowflake. You can see now we've got a commit button. Don't forget in the background we've linked it to our GitHub repo. So initially I want to do an initial check in. So I'm going to click commit. I'm going to type in initial check in and click commit that commits everything to the master branch and then I want to create a new branch to start doing my development work in in the real world imagine your master branch or your trunk represents the code base that's in production when you have a, a, a team come along a development team that needs to create new features new data services you'll want to create a new branch from the master branch so you can start doing those development changes in isolation without affecting any of the existing code base before merging it back in. And so the approach that I'm applying here would be similar to what you do in, in an enterprise environment when you're working with a bunch of other data engineers and developers. So if I click create new branch, I'm just going to call it test, click submit. So now you can see I'm working on the test branch itself. If we go back into GitHub and look at my test repository, you can see I've got my initial check-in on the master branch here, the main branch. If I drop that down, I can see I've got a test branch. And it says here, this branch is up to date with main. And that's because we haven't made any additional changes to the code base yet, which would then allow us to merge us back in. So effectively, it's just telling us that the test branch is exactly the same as the main branch, which is what we would expect to see. 
And so now what have we done? Well, we've created our warehouse databases in our Snowflake account, and we've also loaded our test CSV files in there from the public AWS S3 bucket locations. And we've checked that those exist now in Snowflake within our schema, within our database. The next thing we did then was create a GitHub repository and a DBT cloud account. We've linked those two together. We've checked in the initial master branch, and we've also created a branch called test. And so now we're ready to start working with DBT and interacting with our database objects and practicing some of the functionality that exists in DBT. And so there you have it. That's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. In the next part, we'll get into development with DBT and we'll start to look at how you can deploy transformations onto Snowflake as well as running some unit tests. So more videos coming soon. Keep watching, keep subscribing. Thanks for the support.